Maria workshop for shooting. Actually, this is uh, the title of my PhD uh, defense um, 14 years ago. At that time, I uh, shooting Professor Steve Kiverson, Mac Beasley, and uh, Sandy Feta were in the committee. So today I will quickly uh, review uh, my uh, old works uh, with Shouchen, and I hope I can, I can answer some questions I couldn't answer in the defense many years ago, and will provide some updated work with the recent work uh, along the symmetry uh, application of the symmetry principle. And we all know that this is the uh, uh, poem that Shouchen liked the best. I became to know this poem because of Shouchen, and I also like it very much. You can see also the Chinese translation. Uh, it's actually a uh, Chinese version, it's more symmetric. And to uh, uh, give you a feeling, and actually it's the Asian Chinese uh, poem style. So basically you eliminate all these uh, uh, prepositions and oxy uh, redundant word, then read it, it sounds like a Chinese poem. And we know that uh, the number of five is a common thing to thread out uh, um, almost uh, many important researchers of children. So I, I try to understand why five is so important. So basically, it looks like a starting point of the beauty and the richness. So these are a few effects I, I summarize. First, the most striking effect that we all have five fingers in our hand. And maybe it's the capital problem, who knows. Um, so this is actually the model from the ancient Chinese philosophy. It's like uh, the organization of uh, this world and also in the heaven. So the, basically there are five uh, elements in this world. There are water, wood, uh, fire, the soil, and the gold. If we follow this direction, then one element generates the other element. If you follow the diagonals, uh, one element overcomes the other element. So this kind of uh, interaction uh, generates the rich pattern. And we also think that the heaven, the law in the heaven should be the same as in the ground. So each of the elements should have a correspondence in the plane in the sky. And this is like a, a quite a beautiful and a model. I, I think that Shoshin Wehi will also like it. Now come back to physics. And this is the uh, first paper when I just came to Stanford and uh, work uh, under Shoshin's guidance and also in collaboration with Jiang Ping. So basically we prove that for the uh, the uh, most uh, uh, standard uh, half the model, but if you go to the spin three halves, actually you don't need to fine tune anything for this uh, uh, hopping parameter, chemical potential, and two independent interaction channels. There's a robust uh, SO5 symmetry without any fine tuning. So I don't have time to prove it, uh, but you can see that this is a phase diagram at a half filling. You can see you have uh, this uh, antiferromagnetic spin quadruple, it's a SO5 vector. SO5 adjoints uh, unify the spin and spin octuple. And these two phases, they are uh, SO5 singlet. But actually, they have even a more interesting physics uh, at the particular along this red line. There's a SO7 symmetry. Actually, this is a precise shooting we want. Uh, you know, in a high TC, SO5 is not exact, but here, this is the exact symmetry. It unifies this antiferromagnetism in the quadruple sense with the uh, singlet superconductivity. Uh, this is uh, uh, using the SO5 vector. Uh, there's uh, even another more exciting, which you go to this side to use the SO5 adjoint, which is 21 fold degeneracy, which unifies the charge density wave. The spin and uh, antiferromagnetism of spin and the spin quadruple, uh, sorry, uh, octuple, and also a, a quintet superconductivity in the spin two channel. And this is the line is uh, seeing Young's and eta pairing. And this model, um, uh, actually, this is the first paper to propose to use the code atoms to exploit these large symmetries of the SU2. And this uh, uh, became an active field in, in the code atom research. And uh, uh, a few atoms has uh, been three halves. I just uh, come back from the visiting of Berkeley, the Stanford Cancer Group, they can realize a titanium atom. This uh, fermionic isotope, in my understanding, actually carries a spin half. So uh, optimistically, we could exploit the phase diagram in the near future. And this is my work uh, with Shoshin. Probably in the audience, many people don't know that actually Shoshin is very interested in quantum and color numerical simulation. Although it uh, looks like a numerical asset, actually it has a profound mathematical uh, background of related positivity problem, particular sign problem. 
You know, when the color is a stochastic method to tame the exponentially large uh, the Hubble space, uh, keys to the important sampling, sample a small portion, but a representative portion of space. And this uh, specific formalism called the determinant of color developed by uh, Scalapino and also uh, my colleague Jorge Hirsch made an uh, important contribution to do Hubble-Stronovich uh, decomposition. Then the Pagini function is expressed as a uh, uh, waterline integral over the sample different configurations of the Hubble-Stronovich field and integrate out the fermion field, you get the statistical weight. But the problem is that this statistical weight is uh, probably uh, it's not a positive definite that comes of the sign problem. If the sign problem can appear, so basically the statistical error is out of control and it ruins the simulation. And Shoujin and I, we managed to prove that uh, such a result. If uh, there exists a Kramer's type of symmetry, uh, it doesn't need to be the real time reversal. And if this uh, formula bilinear so satisfies this symmetry, then sign problem is gone. And so we showed that paper in 2005. And uh, recently in the community, there are quite uh, um, effort on sign problem quantum in the color simulation, in particular, uh, Hong Yao himself uh, made a lot of contribution, and also Professor Sajdev's group made a lot of uh, effort in this direction. Um, this is uh, my uh, recent work, and apply this to this uh, bilayer version of a Hubble model. Uh, actually, this is the uh, Scalapino, uh, John, and Hanker model. Can dope a motor insulator, certainly uh, in some parameter region, you can get a supernativity, but uh, we cannot get a D wave by the extended SU symmetry. Uh, I continue to work on the mathematical aspect of sign problem. Uh, it's a collaboration with the Tao Xiangzi group in China, and it's, uh, based on a new um, um, recently developed uh, mathematical tool in the math, uh, math literature. Uh, it's uh, uh, called the reflection positivity, but this generalization is called Marana reflection possibility. So basically, uh, in, uh, to my knowledge, uh, we can unify all the uh, known model to only to, okay, so then to my knowledge, lattice formula models without the sign uh, problem in the determinant of color. We also designed uh, a few uh, models uh, which uh, previously was not known, particularly, it could, uh, 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 it could, uh, uh, be part of particle hole asymmetric. And this is uh, another uh, paper actually is uh, based on a beautiful idea of Shouchen and he told me that um, if you open a solid state textbook, in most chapters we don't need relativity, okay? And the spin orbit coupling is an uh, exception, is a low energy approximation due to a Dirac equation. And uh, is often considered as a single particle effect and not directly related to many ball interactions. Can we generate a spin orbital coupling from a phase transition uh, like uh, uh, all the parameters? Then we can completely throw away relativity. I was uh, fascinated by this idea and uh, uh, worked very hard. And finally, it turns out that uh, you can get it from the ordinary Fermi liquid, uh, uh, Fermi surface instability called the Pomerantiuk instability. And this is the uh, most uh, uh, familiar one is, is a pneumatic state I learned from Steve and Eduardo Fredkin. And uh, if in the spin channel, the most common one will be ferromagnetism. This is like a P wave generalization or even higher angular momentum chan channel generalization of ferromagnetism. Uh, later on, we also work together uh, with uh, Eurado's group and write a long paper to elaborate this formalism. Uh, with my own students, we also construct the uh, spin orbital uh, coupled from liquid theory. I remember in my defense, both Steve and uh, Professor Beasley asked me where to realize this, and I couldn't answer. And uh, now, uh, so this material is uh, 227, the pi uh, It's kind of a hidden order material. I recently also found from Caltech David Schiff's group um, in watching a spontaneous asymmetry breaking. It, it might be a good candidate, uh, <laughs> uh, but I, unfortunately, I didn't have time, uh, uh, didn't have a chance to uh, discuss this with you anymore. And this is my last paper with Shoshin in my PhD time. So, I studied the uh, uh, stability uh, problem of critical edge state. 
the KMED and the Z2 criterion only apply to non-intacting system. So if you consider intaction, so the single particle backscattering violates time rule symmetry, but you backscatter pairs and all times order, which is good, even is allowed by time rule symmetry. This is just a simple intaction term. And we know in one dimensional edges, um, the one dimension the uh, intaction effect could, could be very important. So we perform this uh, uh, logical liquid uh, solubility analysis. Uh, we can find that uh, if the intaction is sufficiently strong, then edge is, uh, is destroyed. Uh, this is the uh, criteria. And um, when I moved to UC San Diego, I had a visiting student, so we performed a quantum and color simulation based on microscopic uh, KMD Hubble model, so quantitatively tested this and resulted consistent. The basic information is that uh, the intaction effect is much stronger than edge than in the bulk. Because bulk, you have pre-existing single particle gap. The edge is presumably it's, uh, it's gapless. So you could have a gray area that your gap, uh, the edge is almost magnetized, but the bulk remains paramagnetic. And this uh, 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 highly collagen liquid, and uh, this concept now is uh, widely uh, used in the literature, I think. Uh, a few years ago, uh, Professor Rui Du, and he's also in the audience, um, it's a beautiful experiment. Uh, they saw, he, um, saw the flashing liquid signal. Okay, now let me uh, move to uh, my own research in the recent years. Um, so we moved, uh, started to work in the direction of quantum dynamics. Um, uh, I was lucky that uh, I had a chance to discuss this with Shou Chen about one and a half years ago, and he liked uh, it very much. And I uh, thank uh, for his um, encouragement. So basically, we know that uh, the uh, solid state system, the dynamics are based is a time dependent uh, shooting equation. Well, generally speaking, for many body system, it's a very complicated system. Then guided by the symmetry principle, it's always helpful to do a symmetry analysis uh, before concrete studies. Then the question is that what kind of symmetry you can find for a dynamic system? So basically, you find the space-time coupled symmetries. Uh, they are not a Lorentz symmetry, it's non-relative system. And uh, we can also try to apply it into solid state uh, system, and this application just at the beginning. Um, now, that's um, step by step. We know if you open a solid state textbook, and typically we begin with uh, crystals. In the 19th century, people already classified uh, all the possible static uh, crystals uh, based on space groups that are based on the translation symmetry of the underlying Bravis lattice. You have point group symmetries, and more interestingly, you could have uh, non symorphic operations like uh, screw rotation and the guide reflection, which means that it's a combination of translation and uh, point group operations, but uh, neither of them is a symmetry. You need to combine them. And then the, uh, in these systems, they are lived in the uh, quantum mechanical object uh, of electrons, and their band structure is governed by Broca theory. So crystal and Broca theory is basically the fundamentals of modern classical physics. Then coming to dynamics, uh, due to its uh, relative simplicity, the periodical driving is a good starting point. Indeed, there was already a framework called flow kit physics. But flow kit physics has a problem, because in, in, the, in this form, the spatial and the temporal symmetries are completely decoupled. If we make an analogy, say it's a three-dimensional crystal, it's not a two-dimensional crystal in the AB plane multiplied by a one-dimensional periodicity in the C-axis, right? So a dynamical crystal should not just be a space crystal and multiplied by a flow kit periodicity. So here's an uh, example of uh, simplest space-time coupled symmetries that are just the translation. So let's look at uh, a one plus one-dimensional system. If I uh, write down a space-time dependent potential, they're just a superposition of uh, two plane waves, but I want to be more, uh, most generic that the k's and omegas to be incommensurate to each other. So if I look at a point, uh, a particular point, look at the history, they are incommensurate generally, there's no periodicity. If I could, uh, any time I take a snapshot, there are no spatial periodicity either. If you want to see the periodicity, uh, you need to go to space and time. So basically, these are wave fronts, the A1 and the A2, they are wave, uh, unit vectors, that are space time couple. Okay, so in other words, that the space time unit cell can be factorized as space domain multiplied by time domain. Okay, so actually, there are even more interesting um, operations, this uh, space time couple non symmorphic operations. So uh, we build up a, a, try to build a framework called a space time group. I will um, expand this. Now let's just uh, um, only consider translation symmetry for the moment. 
So uh, this is the uh, uh, space time uh, unit cell. So next step, if we follow the solid state uh, textbook, we need to construct the reciprocal space. And uh, the reciprocal uh, lattice vector is defined in a way very similar to the solid state, but uh, just uh, pay a little bit attention to this matrix because uh, it's a sign convention in quantum mechanics, it's minus omega k. And then each of these reciprocal lattice vector actually they are defined in momentum and frequency domain, and the Brillouin zone is not, should, generally speaking, is not a rectangular either. And each of them should con, uh, carry its own frequency, and they might be uh, incommensurate to each other. So this is not a flocate problem. Flocate problem can only have one fundamental frequency, and this one can have many. Okay. Now, we also need to generalize the block theory accordingly. Uh, for example, this time-dependent shooting equation with uh, this uh, time-dependent potential, then its uh, solution is characterized by this good quantum number. And then we need to uh, combine the momentum frequency and together they are conserved uh, modular this uh, reciprocal latent vector. And this, uh, pure, uh, this plane wave part and the periodical part is, is also time-dependent is periodical in the space-time domain. If you want to see the spectrum and you do a free analysis and get a secular equation, you can see it's also very similar to a solid state textbook, but the difference is that uh, this uh, free component of potential is a frequency dependent. And then we also need to sum over the, uh, the momentum and the frequency space. So in other words, we really need to take the frequency of time as an extra dimension. So we can't find a time evolution operator in the flow kit physics. Uh, basically, in the most general case, we don't have a uh, periodicity. Now we are in a position to define the uh, space-time uh, group. So let's look at the effect on the space-time coordinate. And this R is a point group operation. Uh, rotation, uh, reflection, uh, rotor reflection. The U is a translation. Combine U, R and U is the space group operation. And this S if it's a minus one, which means that it's a magnetic type transformation. It's a, uh, all these together, the magnetic groups, they are useful to describe uh, magnetic crystals. The last one is our contribution and uh, uh, it's a uh, translation in the time. If you combine everything together, the algebra is also closed, so we call it a space-time group. And certainly you can also use a quantum mechanical wave function to make a representation. A little bit careful is that uh, if the, uh, you reverse the time, the time direction, uh, we need to add a complex conjugate. Okay. Now, if the translation, time translation itself is not a symmetry, you need to, need to be combined with the spatial uh, operations uh, to form the, the symmetry operation. For example, in one plus one dimension, the only possible uh, is uh, a spatial reflection. So actually, that's the, uh, the uh, if, uh, this is the symmetry of the seesaw. At each time, it doesn't have a reflection symmetry. So you reflect it and time translate half a period. This one come back to the self. So this is an analogy of the glide reflection, the symmetry of a uh, row of the footprint. In two plus one dimension, uh, you can combine with the spatial rotations. That's a symmetry of a clock. So at each time, the clock doesn't have a rotation symmetry, but a rotation, say, 90 degree and time translate of three hours, the clock come back to self. So this is an analogy of a school, uh, uh, school uh, <coughs> sorry, a school rotation symmetry. And uh, uh, in the, that's another independent work from uh, Harvard uh, Archimedes Group. Actually, our two papers appears on the archive almost at the same time. Uh, they, are, um, uh, they are focused on the topological classification uh, based on the symmetries. Uh, our viewpoint, uh, we, 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 um, uh, I guess that we construct this group and they didn't construct this group. And we try to like follow the solid state textbook and develop um, these things uh, step by step. And actually there's a new one. I think that uh, and they didn't notice. Actually in three plus one, uh, it can combine with the rotor reflection. So this one actually doesn't have a counterpart in the ordinary uh, space group. Okay, now uh, what is useful? Uh, remember that the space group is uh, well used to classify crystals. Three-dimensional crystals, there are too many, but two-dimensional crystals basically are all there. There are 17, they're called wallpaper groups, and people knew it since the middle age. The analogous question is that how many one plus one-dimensional space-time uh, crystals we can have? Uh, first of all, uh, in a non-relativistic uh, equation, the partial t and partial x squared, they are 
are intrinsically a difference. So I can't really perform a three, four, six for the, uh, for the axis rotation. But I can rotate the x to minus x and t uh, to minus t. So this will eliminate a lot of possibilities. But on the other hand, the reflection with respect to time and with respect to space that are intrinsically different. One is a unitary and the other is um, anti-unitary. Uh, so I need to distinguish them. And certainly, um, okay, the two different glider reflection symmetries and you glide with time and uh, translate, uh, uh, glide in space, translate time or vice versa, we should also distinguish them. So this, uh, uh, at everything together, you have a certain of them. Uh, even for this, actually, for a row of uh, seesaw, you do have this kind of uh, uh, flocate uh, symmetry. Uh, this actually is a pictorial represented this, and this is time is the x. But if you only use a flocate, you don't exhaust all the possible symmetries. Space time symmetry can help us go inside the flocate period to extract the maximum symmetries. And we, uh, natural question are well to, uh, to, to use them, and this is uh, we're still in, uh, in progress. So basically, and there's a beautiful paper in literature by Chen News Group. They can see the called chiral phono mode for the uh, 2D materials, for example, the boron nitride. So this is my simply version. I remember when in mechanics class to calculate the vibration mode of equilateral a triangle. And there's a pair of degenerate linearly polarized mode, and you superpose them. So each side rotating around its own center uh, in a circular way with 120 degree of its difference. And this mode actually can be generalized into a two-dimensional lattice. For example, one of the sub lattices actually the blue spot are static, don't vibrate. And the yellow spot actually they perform this kind of rotating. And this is called the chiral phonon and recently has been optically pumped in the Berkeley uh, Xiang Zhang's group in this uh, tungsten uh, selenide material. So imagine if this kind of phonon mode is coherently pumped and they condensed. So, uh, the lattice side to coherent motion, we must uh, take into this uh, kind of effect in the band structure calculation at the zero order. So let's um, perform a uh, plot of these water lines, and this is, uh, oh sorry, um, uh, this is the uh, a time zero, and this is it's a, a quarter, uh, sorry, a third of the period. We plot all this configuration of lattice vibration. And you can see this, the static side uh, behaves like a threefold rotation axis. And the plaquette center actually is uh, become a screw axis. For example, this side will rotate 120 degree come to here, it's, it's not symmetric, and you need to translate along the time domain at one third of period. So there's a uh, time screw axis. Then this uh, time screw, uh, this non symmetric uh, axis actually, if you calculate the uh, flocate band structure, it will give you a protect the triple degeneracy at the, the K point. And if you only have threefold degeneracy, and that, uh, you know, this uh, will not uh, give you protect the degeneracies, and uh, uh, threefold degeneracy is not uh, common in two dimensional material. Right? In three dimension, you could get it, but this is naturally comes from the space time uh, uh, symmetry. So I, can, uh, I, can, I have run out of time. Um, so, including question or without? Without, okay. Now, maybe I just uh, uh, say a few words. Another um, work I did in the, after my graduates related to material is the um, orbital um, active honeycomb material. So, basically, we develop uh, a framework to unify a uh, class of uh, uh, orbital active system, they are different from graphene in the sense that on each side you have a pair of degenerate p orbitals, uh, PS and PY. And they, uh, recently, they quite excitingly, many experimental systems, including the Bismarck and Stanning, and uh, this is an optical system, polariton lattice, and uh, probably this uh, twi uh, twisted little bilayer graphene also uh, is, has a close relationship. So the underlying uh, unification principle is uh, based on the group symmetry. So for such a structure, if you have this six-fold rotation symmetry, it only has a one uh, two-dimensional representations. You can realize them in terms of p orbitals or d orbitals, and uh, uh, the band structure can be mapped to uh, to each other. Uh, actually, you can uh, band structure get uh, the flat band in you, you know, in if the uh, feeling inside the flat band, you get a weak crystal and a ferromagnetism. And such a band structure. Although here you will have the same dual cone as if in the uh, graphene, 
but uh, actually uh, it's very sensitive to topological gap opening. It provides a mechanism to open the gap as, as the uh, atomic scale has been a bit tough and recently realized in this machine. And this is also a good system to study strong correlation physics to give you uh, frustration um, and the physics. Uh, I think I'm running out of time, so I will probably I will skip this part that um, let me jump to. Uh, so basically, um, okay, let me mention one thing. Um, so basically we can get, uh, uh, so it, uh, actually it does not need to, need necessary to need to use this atomic pair orbitals. You could use a molecular orbitals. Actually this is a collaboration with a first principle group. They uh, called, designed a material called Kagome graphene, which is that the building block is a trimer, and uh, each of them is a carbon PZ orbit. So this uh, atomic uh, molecule, you can design p orbitals. Oh, sorry. Uh, you can see you can have a one-to-one -one correspondence. This is like PX, and you rotate 120 degree and 10 degree. And so the band structure gets a flat band and drag cone here. And uh, if you the loading inside the flat band, uh, they uh, show this uh, ferromagnetism. It can be naturally explained in terms of flat band ferromagnetism. And uh, if you're feeling um, as, uh, uh, you can also, uh, according to this quadratic band touching with not stable, is a mechanism by Hong Yao and Steve and Yurado and his group. It's a spontaneous break time rule symmetry and develop a chain number. And this is, uh, I felt that it's, um, actually I didn't really work in the twisted biographing, but if according to the Leon Fuss paper, he want to uh, construct the one year orbit, you can see this is the Maria, um, the unit cell, and the center is actually the view function zero, these are three lobes. This uh, symmetry is the three lobes at 125th degree. This in my language is P plus IP orbitals, so you can have a lot of uh, flat band magnetism and this kind of stuff, so everything uh, works uh, quite nicely. So I think I should stop. So uh, I, my uh, still have uh, uh, important influence on my research style, and, and this is a new group, and I think he's happy, and this is using some older group to, to unify some material properties. And thank you very much uh, for your attention. Thank you. Can I have a few questions? If you are the first, ah, you get it from me. So for this uh, space-time yeah. group, uh, so if you start uh, not from Schrodinger equation, from Dirac equation, like uh, in graphene, then you can help something like a boost. Yeah, this is excellent questions. Yeah, that's an excellent question. Yeah, uh, uh, I don't know the answer, but I think so. So usually we see that in, in solid state, we see that you have a relativity, we just look at the linear cone, right? But remember when we first learned relativity, we, have, we were fascinated by time dilation, length contraction. We need to see that. Uh, I have some result, but uh, not uh, finalized yet. So we, I think that uh, probably is yes, but <laughs> yeah. Thank you for that. This is a very important question. Actually, Shoshin also recommended uh, what is the problem. So basically, it's a space-time symmetry, right? Find a discrete group. Uh, this is like a gallery. You can imagine the uh, Pangari, and you can even add curvature. So this is actually quite a general problem. For space-time symmetry, consider it's discrete subgroup. Are there any other questions? Hmm. Doesn't seem to be the case, then maybe we can okay. thank you again and use uh, the opportunity to catch up in time. Okay. <laughs> thank okay. you. Uh.